This is the world's most difficult 3D puzzle. At least, that's how they advertise it. I have my doubts. See, I wasn't lying. The world's most difficult 3D jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> so basically, the whole premise of these puzzles is that you actually have three jigsaw puzzles stacked on top of each other, and that's how the full image comes through. So you only have part of the image on each puzzle. And the rest of the puzzle pieces are clear so you can see through to the pieces below. And as you can see, it already comes assembled in the packaging. So here's the pitch on the front. Just scramble up all 540 plastic pieces for the ultimate jigsaw challenge. Looking on the back, they have a whole Ikea style infographic telling you how to solve this thing. So I think the box has trays inside that you're meant to solve on. So you solve all three puzzles and then you can slide them off of the trays to stack them up on top of each other. So I'm not going to read all of these instructions, but you're welcome to um, pause here if you want to uh, read all of that for yourself. Interesting that they literally put a hanging hole on the box you can see it uh, right there. And then after you solve this thing, the box itself um, without this band is meant to be the hanging picture frame. So I'm gonna go through all of this information at the end of the video. Basically, all you have to know for now is that these came out in 1992. We actually found this exact puzzle in my parents' house. It was like tucked behind some other puzzles in Katie's room. And when we found it, I was like, where have you been hiding this thing? This is so cool. Can I have it? <laughs> we had never solved it growing up. I don't remember ever seeing it before. So this was a fun little treasure to uh, discover at home. Okay, so it looks like this band can just slide off. Oh no, oh no. It's literally taped to the box. Oh, I hate that. Okay, there we go. It's not, it's not too much damage. Oh no, okay, I have to be careful not to um, rip this box. I just ripped it a little bit up there. So, okay, everything is encased in this uh, styrofoam tray. Ooh, ooh, a catalog. Okay, hang on. Okay, so that's the styrofoam tray. It, it actually takes up most of the um, thickness of this puzzle. Okay, so we've got one, is that all one puzzle? Is that, oh wait, hang on, oh no, oh no. Uh oh, oh no, oh no, this might have been a mistake. Okay, so we, oh my gosh, is this entire thing ruined? No, it's not, it's coming up. Okay, no, we're okay, we're okay. Okay, so on each of these um, layers, we actually have a glass tray, and then the puzzle pieces themselves are very thin. Can you see that? Look at how thin that is, especially compared to the tray. Um, it's kind of stuck down, so I'm trying to just gently release it off of the glass. Oh no, oh no, it didn't rip, okay. No, it didn't rip, it's just one puzzle piece stuck down. <laughs> it literally feels like it's about to rip though, like this is really, really stuck on there. Okay, all right, I did it. It looks like we have uh, two more trays. No, we only have one more tray, but there is uh, puzzle pieces on, on both sides of it. And this one's actually coming off pretty easily. So here we have a play sheet. The jigsaw pieces are designed to be sticky. Who made that design? Didn't they realize that 30 years later, someone would be uh, struggling to get everything taken apart? After mixing all the pieces together, have fun reconstructing the three layers on these three play sheets. When completed, slide the layers back onto the trays to which they will cling so you can display your new 3D poster. So, okay, we have one, we have, uh, oh, there's no graphic on that one, but we have two and we have three. And then 
We've got this little info sheet. So this gives us the final image of all three layers that we're trying to complete, but we don't know which part of the image is on which layer. This is truly a challenge for enthusiasts. And then we've got this catalog, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk more about all of the different uh, puzzles that this company released, so I will get to that later. Oh man, I'm exhausted and I haven't even started solving this puzzle yet. It literally took almost an hour just to get all of these pieces apart. <laughs> I have to say though, I am a little disappointed by these puzzle pieces. From looking at it in the box, I thought these were going to be like thick acrylic pieces, so like a hard plastic but they're not. They're like a bendy, soft plastic. They're super thin. And as you saw, they were all stuck together to each other. They were all connected on every single corner. There were even two pieces where I had to pull out scissors to cut them apart. And then here's my other worry. So most of these pieces have a design on them and you can tell uh, very clearly which side is the front and the back, but there are a handful of completely clear pieces with no design at all on them. And when I was looking at the, um, the pieces when they were still attached, the piece cut doesn't look all that unique. So when you have a design, even a tiny sliver of a design, you can be sure that what you're putting together actually goes together. But I am really concerned about false fits with all of these entirely clear pieces. So this is 540 pieces in total, which means that it is three 180 piece puzzles. So I can't imagine it's gonna be that hard like there aren't that many pieces to go through as i'm working on it and as you saw in that video where i mixed three gradient puzzles together i actually love working on three puzzles simultaneously i think that's a really fun challenge to make this easier i definitely could have uh, kept each puzzle separate but you know I had to mix them. The box told me to mix them. So I guess finally I can uh, start the timer. Let's get started and see how this goes. All right, the sorting is done. Um, probably the least painful part of this whole puzzle so far. So I thought about trying to lay out all of the uh, middle pieces at the beginning, but I don't think I have enough room right now. So uh, let's just start with the edges. So you can see that I separated them between uh, the ins and the outs, and there's only the standard piece shape. Uh, there aren't any other piece shapes to separate by. Over here, I pulled out all of the entirely clear pieces. Uh, those will just live over here until the very end. And then up here, I have uh, all of the corners. And I was actually going to use these uh, papers that came with the puzzle. However, looking at them on the colored background, I think that makes it so much easier to see where the design is. Since this picture is entirely black and white, 
if you put it on a white background, it is so hard to tell what is clear and what is printed white. So uh, I'll pull all the corners over here and these guys are just gonna go away with the rest of the materials. All right, so I'm a little over an hour into it. So up here, you can see all of the edges that I worked on and I have a lot of big sections, but the picture just ends and then you have a fully clear connector between the sections. And I already had a handful of false fits even with a picture on the pieces. So I was worried if I tried to force together these like fully clear sections, it would all be wrong. <laughs> So down here, you can see my little army of Escher men. <laughs> this is probably the easiest part of the whole thing because it's these very organic shapes where it's clear if it's right or wrong. Everything that is left now is like geometric shapes of either white, black, or this stripey texture. That's all we've got. If I really need to, I can go back to that paper that had the full uh, image on it for reference. And then if I really, really need to, I think there are images on WorthPoint from past eBay listings where people do show each individual uh, picture. But I'm hoping that I can get this done without looking at any reference image. It's definitely uh, a little more intimidating than I imagined going into it. I'm really looking forward to getting to this one because with all the different colors and textures, it's gonna be so much easier. Oh man, I'm looking at this screen and being like, can you guys see literally anything that I'm doing down here? That's the struggle of doing a clear puzzle. It's so hard to show on camera. So I just got these sections put together. So I have basically an entire edge and then almost the entire long edges. I realized all of these uh, white pieces would be pretty easy to spot in all of these crazy pieces, so I got that big section done. I'm at 2 hours and 42 minutes, which is uh, quite a lot for a 540 piece puzzle. But I'm definitely making progress, and uh, just like with any puzzle, the further along you go, the easier it'll get, and then as I get all of these connected, it'll just get easier and easier.
right, so I'm four and a half hours in to this uh, 500 piece puzzle. This one is looking great. I just got this big section up at the top placed in, so I just have a couple random pieces here and there. This one is also looking pretty good, although there's a big chunk that I don't know what's going on in there. And then for the third one, we still have a lot of uh, disconnected pieces. And I feel like I remember the top layer has fewer designs on it, uh, so I guess that's why that one has been left for last. I actually did have one quick idea though. I grabbed these um, different colors of cardstock, and I thought if I slipped a different color under each puzzle, um, it might be a little easier for you guys to see on the overhead camera, like where the different puzzles, uh, where they are. I think that looks a little nicer. All right, this entire image is done except for two entirely clear pieces down here and three entirely clear pieces up here, but I'm going to wait until the end to fill all of those in. Oh man, five hours in and I have officially finished all of the pieces with any kind of design on them. All that is left is 41 entirely clear pieces. It's basically like doing a solid colored puzzle at this point, except uh, that they're clear. As I suspected, this one is definitely the least dense. So there are only a couple pieces in these two. And then this one has a whole lot that still needs to be filled in. And something else about these pieces, when there's a design on them, you could clearly tell which was the front and which was the back. When there's no design, uh, there's no real bevel on the edge, it is impossible to know. So I have double the possibilities uh, for all of these pieces. There we go, my first complete layer with no missing piece. Wait, is that one? No, it's not one. Oh my god, this is so hard when it's clear. Okay, my first um, complete layer with no missing pieces. Oh my god, I can't believe I finished it. That was a lot. So that took me five hours and 34 minutes for a 540 piece puzzle. I'm so exhausted. I'm not even gonna stack them up today. I'm gonna take a closer look at everything tomorrow. I need to go look at something else for a while. <laughs> Oh my god, it's a puzzle on a puzzle, and we're looking at it through a puzzle. This is the most puzzleception I have ever done in my life. <laughs>
All right, it is actually a couple days later, but I'm back and it's time to put all of this back together. And then I actually have another version of this exact puzzle that was released a couple years after the original ones. And I think they may have fixed a lot of the issues I had, but we're gonna get to this in just a sec. For now, let's uh, stack these back up. All right, coming back in with all of our supplies. I actually knocked all of this stuff uh, onto the floor yesterday and I was so scared that the glass sheets were just gonna shatter. Uh, luckily, they're totally fine. So I'm gonna leave these info sheets out to look at uh, a little bit later. And then, oh, I should have remembered which order they go in. I'm pretty sure this is the bottom layer because it has the most stuff going on. Oh, also, before I get everything stacked up again, I did just want to point out that these pieces don't lock together perfectly. There's like a gap there that I just can't get the pieces to like, smush back together into. And then also all of these clear pieces. It was really hard to see in the time lapse, uh, but I had a lot of false fits. I was rearranging everything. Um, I'm still not entirely sure that this is perfectly right, but it lays flat enough that I'm just like, it's fine. We're just gonna go with it. Okay, so we have our bottom layer. Then we do a sheet of glass. So then we have our second layer, which goes right there. It, it blocks quite a bit of the layer underneath it. Is that right? So, okay, then we have our second glass sheet. It's a little anticlimactic since we already saw the finished puzzle when I first unboxed it. I think this would have been a lot more exciting if it came disassembled originally. <laughs> but I think my problem with this concept is that the pieces are just so shiny that you get a lot of glare when trying to look down into the layers beneath it. Like you can see that third layer down there, but it's kind of grayed out from all of the layers on top of it. And then that's only compounded when you put it back in the box slash frame. And then you end up with another piece of plastic over the whole thing, which just adds even more glare and makes it even harder to see what you're even looking at. Like, I know the whole idea is to hang this on your wall as a piece of art, and I do think it is very clever to design a very simple box that basically acts as a frame, but I personally would never hang this up on my wall. Like, even if it was a picture I loved, I. I just don't think this concept is something I would want out for decoration. So, okay, this one is um, fully put back together, but now I have two more puzzles to solve. So this is another one that was released by Crystal Lines in that same series, only this one is the Coral Reef puzzle. And I wanted to get it because it is much more colorful, so I thought it would be um, a lot easier. I even put down this blue background because I thought it was like the water in this puzzle. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this one now. Um, it's pretty similar to the first one, so I'm not gonna go super in depth into it. But first, I'm actually gonna um, time myself just to see exactly how long it takes to get all of this stuff out of the box and fully disassembled. <laughs> All right, that took uh, 23 minutes just to get this thing out of the box and disassembled. So let's reset the timer and then see how long it takes to put it back together.
All right, so this one was definitely easier. Um, I'm about an hour in and I already have this background puzzle completely finished. Unlike the first one, this one has this full background, so there's no clear parts on here at all. The entire thing is printed. I also have both complete edges finished, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna estimate, um, maybe another hour, hour and a half to finish all of these. Well, that was a very easy puzzle. Um, it only took me an hour and 43 minutes, way less time than the five hours that the Paradox one took me. I don't have a lot more to say about this puzzle, um, just that it was uh, way easier than the first one because there's just a lot more going on. So there were literally only nine entirely clear pieces and they were all in the same layer, as opposed to the first one, which had over 40 entirely clear pieces uh, throughout all three puzzles. So I'm just temporarily uh, stacking these on top of each other, and I'm gonna put that off to the side, because now I wanna talk about the Buffalo Games version of these puzzles. So when I was doing my initial research for this, I saw that there was another version of the same puzzles, but I was like, I assume it's, they probably just redesigned the box and the puzzle itself is exactly the same. I can't imagine they reprinted the whole thing. Well, you know what happens when you assume. So I ended up taking a closer look at the photos that I had pulled from Worth Point and when I zoomed in on the puzzle pieces, I saw that the puzzle pieces were different shapes than the Paradox puzzle. And so I was like, okay, fine. I guess they're different puzzles. I guess I have to get one so I can show it in the video. So this came out in 1994. Um, it was rebranded as a three layer jigsaw puzzle, which I like better. I think that's a lot more descriptive than a 3D jigsaw puzzle. And Puzz 3Ds already existed at that time, so 3D puzzle already meant something completely different from what this was. So you can see it's the exact same artwork that they licensed. And down here you can see the three layers, um, the exact same three layers that I just put together. Here you can see the back cover, and it's interesting that the first puzzle was all about making the entire challenge of the puzzle that you mix all three together and then you don't know what's going to be in each uh, different puzzle. Whereas in this version, they fully call out exactly what all three layers are uh, going to look like. Also, another huge difference is that these do not come already assembled. So I bought this one off of eBay. It uh, has been done before. It's not in the original packaging, but in the one I found on Worth Point, again, the pieces just come in a bag in the box. They're not fully assembled. Also, this one that I got on eBay uh, is missing one piece, but I got it for pretty cheap, so it's fine. So if we look at what's in here, um, okay, let me look at the instructions in a sec. These actually came from the eBay seller. They included uh, photos of what is on every single layer, including um, pointing out where the missing piece is. And then we get these three pieces of cardstock, exactly the same as the first one, except that none of them have that play sheet graphic on them. And so there's no glass for this one. Um, there's just the puzzle pieces. And there's also no frame to display it. So they're really not pushing the whole concept of wanting to 
put it together and then go hang it on your wall anymore. But this is what I'm here for. Let's look at these pieces. This is what I was hoping for in the original version. They're hard plastic. This feels so much nicer as a puzzle piece to hold and to handle. See how this one was this super soft, like bendable plastic. This one, you can literally hear me tap on it and I can bend it a tiny bit, but it feels so much more solid. And then plus, this is what originally clued me in to the fact that they remade the puzzle pieces. You have a lot more variety of puzzle piece shape. So you can see how the new version is uh, just a slightly different um, shape than the old one. This one is much more rounded on all of the knobs. Uh, this one is a little more squat with smaller connectors. But the clear pieces are still perfectly clear. Um, you can still very easily tell what is the front and what is the back. So even though I've already done th uh, this puzzle this morning, I'm really excited to do it again and give these uh, slightly different puzzle pieces a try. Okay, I now understand why they specifically say to do them on the play sheets and why they even have a graphic showing you sliding them on top of each other because these pieces do not lock together at all. They're, they're super loose. So even though they feel nice in your hands, um, they, you just can't like move sections around. Like I'm barely touching these and all of these just fully came apart. So before I get too much further, um, I am going to bring back the cardstock so that I can actually move these around after I'm done. All right, so I have this one pretty much done. Um, I'll just fill in these last few pieces as I find them. I am at 38 minutes, and I was hoping as I filled in more pieces, it would feel less like fragile and less like it was about to break apart with every single move. And while that is true, um, it still does not at all lock together. So. I'm really nervous about finishing these and then attempting to slide them on top of each other.
night after doing three, well, technically nine different puzzles in this video. I'm finally done with the puzzling. So my timer says an hour 36. However, there was one point where I forgot to turn it on. So let's just add like 10 minutes to that. Basically, it took me almost the exact same amount of time to do this puzzle as it did to do the first version. So I don't know if anyone has ever had the two versions of this puzzle right next to each other before, so let's do a full comparison. Okay, here is layer one. So you can see that the Crystal Lines version is much more opaque than the Buffalo version. The colors on this version are also much more vibrant and much more blue. And then on this one, they're a lot more teal and a little bit muted. They all kind of um, fade into each other a little bit more. Also, this one is pretty matte where you have all the printing, whereas this one is very shiny. You can see the reflection there. Moving on to the second layer, uh, the differences aren't quite as apparent between these two, but there are definitely some color differences. So these fish are much more yellow. And then over here, they're much more orange. Also, the line art just seems thicker on this version. It feels a lot more cartoony. Like, look at that, and then compare it to this, where the lines are much thinner. And finally, here is the third layer. Now, I already knew that this piece was missing. The eBay seller disclosed that. But then a second piece was also missing, so... That's unfortunate. But again, you can see how the line art is just a lot thicker on this version compared to that version. Even though I had high hopes for the Buffalo version, I actually think the Crystal Lines version is a little nicer to look at in person. I think I prefer this one. But okay, now is the moment of truth. I'm going to attempt to stack the Buffalo version. I'm so nervous. This entire thing is just gonna fall apart. Okay, I have the bottom layer. Let's try to just make sure that's as smooth as possible. Now let's grab the second layer. Okay, I'm gonna just press it down here to try to hold it in place and then just gently slide out the paper so that I'm not moving the puzzle, I'm just moving the paper. Oh, wow, that worked. Oh, that looks really cool. Okay, now let me do the next one. Okay, I have the puzzle in place and I'm sliding out the paper. Oh, wow, okay, that worked. Oh my gosh, just like the first one, it's just so shiny that it's hard to see down through all three layers. Like you can barely even see what's going on on that bottom layer because there's just so much glare from these plastic pieces. So I actually had an idea. Um, I brought in my light box, which you just saw me use in the, uh, the heat puzzle video. So let's try sliding this entire thing onto the light box and see if that helps at all. Ooh, oh wow. Oh, that's such a difference. Oh my God. That's so cool. Okay, you can see the entire thing now. Oh, that looks so much better. So it turns out the entire key to this puzzle is, uh, to have a light box and be able to put a light source underneath the entire thing. Okay, that actually is very pretty. Yeah, I do like how that looks. Do they make picture frames like shadow boxes that have a light behind them? Like if you were gonna display this, that's what you would need to do. Again, that looks so much better than it did without the light underneath it. You can really see that bottom layer. And with the thick panels of glass in between each layer, you really get the 3D effect way more than you did with the Buffalo version.
Okay, so now that we know that this is the best way to look at these puzzles, let's bring back the original Paradox version and see what that looks like. Okay, well, it's definitely better than it looked in the box, but I'm not sure about this one. I still don't think this is something I would want out on display. And then, okay, there's one more thing I wanted to try. So on the Buffalo instructions, they say at the very bottom that if you have more than one of the puzzles, you can mix and match the layers to get new crazy scenes. So since I have Paradox and Coral Reef, let's mix and match and get underwater Paradox. <laughs> All right, so I'm taking away the top layer of this one, and then I'm gonna bring back the top layer of that one. And, you know, actually, <laughs> that's really fun. Oh, I like that. Okay, this is the best one of all. It is so whimsical to have all these fish mixed with this MC Escher type of illustration. Yeah, this is really fun. I've had my critiques, but I really like where we ended up here. All right, so this is probably the deepest dive that anyone has ever done on these puzzles. But we're not quite done yet because I want to tell you where they came from and who created them. And I actually got in touch with him, so we're going to hear from the creator himself. So these came out in 1992 from a company called Crystal Lines, which is an Australian company. And you can see on the back that the concept is credited to Australian physicist Dougald Keith. So I looked up Dougald Keith, I got in touch, and here is what he had to say about these puzzles. Huh, that's a blast from the past. <laughs> I don't think he was expecting to get a random email uh, asking about some puzzles he released 30 years ago. <laughs> but he talked about the plastic. He said that the original plastic was easy to cut, but hard to print on. They actually had to silk screen onto them. Meanwhile, the buffalo puzzles with the harder plastic were the opposite. So they were harder to cut, but easier to print onto. He said that he prefers the originals. Uh, that's the exact same conclusion that I came to in this video as well. Interestingly, he said that the coral reef puzzle was their best seller. Although when I looked it up on Worth Point, it seemed like the Paradox puzzle was the most prominent. So maybe that one was just exported a little more. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that. But they sold over a million copies of these puzzles. So it was definitely a very successful product. So on the box, you can see how it lists out all of these different companies all over the world that imported these puzzles. So it was definitely a worldwide product. And that answers the question of how my family got our hands on it, because we definitely were not buying jigsaw puzzles from Australia in 1992. So there were actually 11 of these puzzles that they released in total. You can see that the included catalog is of their nature collection. So I did some Googling, I looked them up on WorthPoint, and I managed to find photos of every single one of these puzzles except for one. So if anyone is in Australia and has a copy of that puzzle, I'd love to see a photo of it. So then, if you remember in the Coral Reef puzzle, they had this other catalog showing the black and white puzzles. At the time that the catalog was printed, they only had two of them available, 
Um, in total, they actually released three, but as far as I can tell, those are the only three black and white puzzles that they ever released. I also noticed that they only put the world's most difficult 3D puzzle tagline on the black and white puzzles, which makes sense because it was definitely much more difficult than the color one. But I have to say, even for 1992's puzzle standards, that's a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> yes, it was difficult, but this was nowhere near the most difficult puzzle in the world. Okay, so then interestingly, on Worth Point, I also found images of the exact same puzzles but released with different packaging. These were also released by Crystal Lines in 1992, but they were branded as Jigsaw 3D posters. These are all of the images that I could find with this box design, so I don't know exactly how many they released like this, or if they came before or after uh, this version. But anyway, moving on to the Buffalo Games version. Uh, these came out in 1994, and Buffalo licensed and re-released four of them. So another difference that I noticed is that on this box, the illustrator is credited as Bambi Smith, whereas on the Crystal Lines versions, it's only credited to J.B. Smith. Um, I asked Dugold about this, he couldn't remember why she was credited differently. So I looked her up. She is still a very active and very talented illustrator, and she is active on Instagram. So I sent her a message asking if she remembered anything interesting from doing these puzzles. Uh, I didn't hear back, but just take a look at her artwork. It is really beautiful. So speaking of Buffalo Games, uh, Dugald Keith worked with them quite a bit. He actually sent me his product portfolio. It is very impressive. He has designed so many different types of puzzles and games over the years. I'm definitely gonna have to check out some of his other puzzles. So my overall verdict on these 3D puzzles that are not actually 3D puzzles. I think it's an interesting concept. I think the execution didn't quite go as far as I would have hoped it would. I wouldn't necessarily recommend going out of your way to get your hands on these, but if you do have the opportunity to do one, just make sure that you have a light box or a glass table with a lamp underneath so that you can get a light source underneath when you're done. Because it really makes a huge difference and it really just brings the pictures to life. So, okay, what do you guys think? Would you try these? Uh, if you were puzzling in the 90s, did you have these? Your code word for the comments will be transparent. Happy puzzling and Thank you for indulging me in doing these mega deep dives into these vintage puzzles that literally no one else remembers. <laughs>